Hey there guys, welcome to this video which is looking at solubility rules and how you can use them to predict whether you're going to get a precipitate or not. So if you're given a word equation, so for example lead nitrate and sodium chloride and asked to complete it, the first thing you need to do is figure out how you can work out the products. So it's nice and simple, all you have to do is take the first part of the name and the last part of the name and swap them round. So you take the lead from lead nitrate, the chloride for sodium chloride to give you lead nitrate, and then sodium from sodium chloride and the nitrate from lead nitrate, which gives you sodium nitrate. So lead nitrate plus sodium chloride gives you lead chloride and sodium nitrate. And this is the case in all precipitation reactions. The next thing you need to be able to do is figure out whether you've got a precipitate. So you need to have a look at your rules. So if we start off with lead chloride, we look up at our chlorides in the table. Chlorides are all soluble except for silver and lead. Therefore, lead is going to be my precipitate and it's going to give me a solid. Sodium nitrate, all nitrates are soluble, therefore it will be aqueous in solution. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to put this into practice and I'm going to prove it to you using some chemical reactions. Okay, so if you want to find out if you've got a precipitate in a reaction, what you need to do is have a look at your reactants and then figure out your products. So for example, if I take iron sulfate and react it with sodium hydroxide, you take the endings and swap them round, so it becomes iron hydroxide and sodium sulfate. You then use your solubility table and you find out whether those products are going to be soluble or insoluble. So I've got iron hydroxide, iron hydroxide is going to be insoluble. You look on the solubility table as you can see on the right here and that is one of the ones most hydroxides are insoluble except for sodium, potassium and ammonium. The other thing I'm going to get is sodium sulfate. Most sulfates as you can see are soluble. So let's test it and see if we get a precipitate. So if I take my iron sulfate and pop it into here, take a bit of sodium hydroxide and add it in as you can see, I've got a precipitate forming. If I do the same with potassium chloride, which is going to give me potassium hydroxide and sodium chloride. Sodium chloride is salt water, so you should realise that that is soluble. And then potassium hydroxide. Again, we said most hydroxides are insoluble, except for sodium, potassium and ammonium. So we should not get a precipitate here. So I tip this into here. React it in, and what do I get? No precipitate. The final one, I'm going to have a look at copper sulfate. So copper sulfate and sodium hydroxide is going to give me copper hydroxide and sodium sulfate. Sodium sulfate, we've already said, is going to be soluble. Copper hydroxide, however, is one of the ones that is insoluble. Therefore, we should get a precipitate. And as you can see, we do. Right, that's everything new you need to know from the video, so we've got a few questions for you to have a go at. So there are four in here with an extension, which are to write the word equation for the following reactions and name the precipitate formed, if any. So you've got iron 2 sulfate plus sodium hydroxide, lithium nitrate and copper hydroxide, sodium sulfate and lead 2 nitrate, and potassium chloride plus ammonium sulfate. There is an extension which is to write the balanced equations um, and include your state symbols for them. So to be able to do that you need to remember the ions and remember the actual charges of them. So if you remember, if it gives you this in brackets, it's iron which is Fe2+, sulfate is SO4 minus, sodium's in group 1 so Na+, hydroxide OH-, lithium group 1 Li+, nitrate is NO3 with 1 minus charge, Copper Cu2 plus, hydroxide OH minus, sodium Na plus, sulfate SO4 2 minus, lead Pb2 plus, nitrate NO3 1 minus, potassium K plus, chloride Cl minus, and ammonium NH4 plus, and sulfate SO4 2 minus. So if you fancy having a go at writing the balanced equations, use those, use what you've learnt about finding the formula, and have a go at it. Pause the video now, we'll see how you've done in a min. Okay, let's see how you've done. So the first one then was iron 2 sulfate plus sodium hydroxide. So you take the 
start of this one and the ending of this one, which gives you iron hydroxide. Start of this one, end of this one, sodium sulfate. So in the exam, you'd get one mark for that. The next thing is to figure out if you have a precipitate. So if you look in your solubility table, you'll see that sulfates are soluble. So sodium sulfate is soluble, but iron hydroxide is insoluble. So your precipitate is iron hydroxide. Your second mark would be for labelling that, either with an arrow saying precipitate or underlining saying precipitate or putting the state symbol in. The next thing is the balanced equation. So iron sulfate is FeSO4, sodium hydroxide is NaOH, iron 2 hydroxide is FeOH2 in brackets, and sodium sulfate is Na2SO4. To balance it, all you need to do is put a 2 in front of the NaOH. So that would give you another two marks, one for the balanced equation and on the left hand side and on the right hand side. And then your state symbols would be an extra mark, aqueous for iron sulfate, aqueous for sodium hydroxide, solid for iron hydroxide and aqueous for sodium sulfate. So in terms of marks, there would be one mark for the word equation, one mark for the precipitate, two marks for the balanced equation and one mark for the state symbols. Question two, we should have had lithium hydroxide and ammonium nitrate. In this case, your precipitate would be lithium hydroxide. Lithium nitrate is LiNO3, ammonium hydroxide NH4OH. Lithium hydroxide is LiOH and ammonium nitrate is NH4NO3. In this situation, it's already balanced, you don't need to do any more. All you need to do is put the state symbols in, which is aqueous, aqueous, solid for your precipitate, and aqueous. So one mark for the word equation, one mark for the precipitate, one mark for the symbol equation in this case, and one mark for the state symbols. The next one, sodium sulfate and lead nitrate, is going to give you sodium nitrate and lead sulfate. One mark for that. In this case, our precipitate is going to be lead sulfate. And in terms of doing our balanced equation, sodium sulfate is Na2SO4, lead nitrate is PbNO3 in brackets 2, which is going to give me lead sulfate, which is going to be PbSO4, and sodium nitrate, which is NaNO3. All you need to do to balance that is put a 2 in front of the NaNO3. State symbols, it's aqueous, aqueous, solid, aqueous again. So in this case, five marks, one for the word equation, one for the precipitate, two for the balanced equation, and one for the state symbols. On to the next one, which is potassium chloride and ammonium sulfate. So this one gives us potassium sulfate and ammonium chloride. In this situation, there is no precipitate. So if you look at your solubility table, sulfates are mostly soluble. Potassium is one of those ones that's soluble and chlorides are also mostly soluble, including ammonium chloride. So no precipitate, so you'd actually write down in an exam there is no precipitate. Then you do your balanced equation, so we start off with potassium chloride, which is KCl, ammonium sulfate, which is NH4 in brackets 2 SO4, which gives you potassium sulfate, which is K2 SO4, and ammonium chloride, which is NH4 Cl. Then to balance that, you can see we've got two potassiums over here, so I'll put a two in front of KCl, and therefore I've got two chlorines and two NH4s, so I just need to take that and double it over here. And then in terms of the state symbols, they're all soluble, therefore it's aqueous for all four. Okay, that pretty much sums up this video. We have got a few review questions for you, which are in the same vein. We have lead nitrate plus potassium sulfate, iron three chloride, so that'll be Fe3 plus, plus sodium hydroxide, and copper 2 chloride plus ammonium hydroxide. So have a go at those three, and that brings this video to an end. Hi guys, hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, click on subscribe down below, and you can also find out more information on my website, mrbarnstc.com, and Facebook and Twitter.